9 a.m. when New Constellations pulls into Montreal. This is home away from home, where the accommodations are as tight as the rule. You gotta put your shoes in the bin. Shoes in the bin? Shoes in the bin. Oh, okay. Because we run a we run a tight clean ship over here. Hi, I'm Nick. Nick, Duncan. They're a traveling caravan of musicians and authors. That's Damien. Visiting towns, cities, and First Nations across Canada. Yeah. Holy cow. So this is me. This is me. <laughs> so, so there's even people down there. Yeah, people down on the bottom. This is cozy, man. It's cozy. Jarrett Martineau, a Cree Dene music producer, is one of the men behind the tour. The bottom one has a shelf. It's a really hard lifestyle. Yeah. The other is indie musician Jason Collette from the band Broken Social. <laughs> The goal of their tour, to bring indigenous and non-indigenous artists together, to live and perform side by side. An attempt to bridge the gap between two worlds that rarely meet. This whole thing is an experiment for us because this thing has not happened before in this way and because there's so much at stake bringing these communities together who aren't talking to each other, who aren't sharing the stage together, who aren't in the same room together very often. Why is that rare? Because it's not happened before. And, and I'm a part of a, uh, I've become more aware of this as I've engaged in this project, like that, that my, my indie rock world is very white centric, you know? I've been pretty blind to that for the most part. It's, it's just what it's been. You know. What's it like to, to realize that your indie rock world is pretty white? It, in some ways, it's a little embarrassing, you know? Um, but, but at the same time, it, uh, I'm really valuing the steep learning curve of, of, of the perspectives that I'm gaining by working on this, for sure. Where's not Jesus? Oh, no, very sorry. The white one. Yeah. No, I want to use Jesus. That's it. No whitewashing to be found with new constellations. As they set up the venue and start sound check, the core lineup is joined by locals that include Lido Pimienta, fresh off winning the Polaris Prize. Hey, yeah. There's also indie rocker and hometown favorite Sam Roberts. Other big names have appeared too. Feist, Naomi Klein, A Tribe Called Red, over 50 performers in all. But the real goal is to shine a spotlight on new indigenous voices, such as Ansley Simpson and Leanne Simpson, whose music explores Anishinaabe connections to land and story. Indigenous musicians have been for so long unheard. Yeah. Why? Because these artists were living under a time where they couldn't be proud of who they were. They were living under a time of total racist reality. So presenting that as a part of your music wasn't something that would be socially acceptable in any context, let alone presenting yourself as an indigenous person in that reality wouldn't even be socially acceptable. Soft rock and their socks off. Yeah. These days, indigenous music is experiencing a moment. Call it a resurgence, perhaps the next wave. Riding that wave, Jeremy Dutcher, who hails from Wollstock Nation in New Brunswick. This is his first rock tour. He hasn't even released his debut album yet. You know, I like to talk more about resurgence and revitalization, you know. Um, singing the language is really, really important to me. He's one of fewer than a thousand people in Canada who speak the Wollstock Maliseet language, and it's woven into his songs. We're just excited to tell our stories on our own terms. And I think for us, we invite people to listen. If we can use this platform to, to move the needle a little bit, 
for, for the non-indigenous community. Uh, that's exciting. Sound checks like this are old hat for Juno winning Inuk singer Elisipi, a mother of two with a new baby and new album on the way. I think for us as native artists or native people, I think we're out there now. We're, we're more than ever and we're, we're not, we have no, you know, it's, we have no limits. Um, because what we do is uh, we just want to expand it to not just native people, to, to others. Um, you're, you're okay if we decide to do a Hanya Romai thing, we should definitely yeah. do it. Yeah. also sings in her indigenous language in Nuktitut, and she tackles tough topics. This song, about domestic violence, is also about indigenous empowerment. There's one song that I wrote called Aknaq, and... Uh, it's, it's very much um, representing the woman now, today, who's able to express and say, I, I don't want this. Another of her songs, a cover of a long forgotten Inuit folk rock song, has become a group favorite. Part of the reason for the moment of a tour like this even being possible and a project like this being possible is the fact of the caliber of the talent in the indigenous community right now across the country is so, 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 so high. So why was it so important for non-indigenous artists and indigenous artists to be on the tour together? Why not just have a tour of indigenous artists? I think it becomes greater than the sum of its parts. It's pretty simple. Yeah. Well, uh, Having notable non-Indigenous artists involved uh, was a strategic thing on our part. If we have a band like July Talk or Sam Roberts showing up, that people are going to pay attention. What would you say to, to a concern that the white artists are, are propping up the Indigenous artists? It was a concern of ours from the get-go, you know. We didn't want this to have any kind of charity optic to it, you know, it was very important. But the thing is, is and what the, what, what the white artists have quickly discovered, for, uh, which has been a beautiful surprise all around, is, is the high level of talent. It's, it's, the, it's the furthest thing from charity. They can stand on their own really well. Yeah, and I was like, that wasn't a surprise for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sam Roberts seems anxious to avoid any white savior vibe, instead plans for a collaboration with Cree cellist Chris Dirksen. I'm definitely not trying to save anybody on this stage tonight. It's not the role, it's just to hear, I mean, and to share, and to get to know each other. It's like having cousins that you know you have, but you're never really allowed to meet for whatever reason. If New Constellations is a meeting of cousins, the circle just before the show is a chance for quality family time and to work out pre-show jitters. All right. All right. And then doors open and it begins. Greetings, hello everyone. Tanse. And uh, welcome all everyone to New Constellations. This tour cost north of a million dollars to gather all the performers plus hold workshops for Indigenous youth, much of it paid for by the Canada 150 Fund and the Centre for Truth and Reconciliation. Thank you all for paying your taxes and supporting the arts. But 
that the artists resist any grand notions that what they're achieving is reconciliation through art. I struggle with that word, and I think it's easy to frame things that way. What's more difficult is to actually engage with what's happening today. You know, talking about water rights, talking about housing, you know, talking about the suicide um, crisis in a lot of our communities. Um, these are the conversations I want to be having. We're not going to change anything like that, but we are hoping that a few hundreds of people, now thousands of people that we met through this tour who came, are probably going to go back home and maybe have a conversation, something they would have never done. Those conversations often stall when accusations of racism and privilege cause people to leave the room. But this audience stays to the end. The new Constellations finale, a huge 70s hit originally sung by an indigenous band that everyone can sing and dance to. In the afterglow, there's no talk of land disputes or white guilt. There are only relationships. Some have called new constellations groundbreaking. A more apt description may be ground healing. Duncan McHugh, CBC News, Montreal. That was cool. A little more about that song there. The artists were performing on stage at the end. Some of you may recognize it from the 70s, but some of you may recognize it from Guardians of the Galaxy. Come and Get Your Love was a huge hit back in 1974 for Redbone. That's the first ever chart-topping all Native American band. Uh, they were members of the Cherokee, Yaki, Yaki's, Apaches, and Shoshone heritage. And that might be a bit of a throwback for some of you. <laughs> 